first question we were asked was, you know, what is your name? Where are you from? What is your father's name? What is your religion? And it was quite typical to be asked these four questions early on. They want to know, you know your name, obviously, and where you were from, but to be asked your religion was a real a, a novelty for us because nobody in New Zealand inquires what is your religion. It's like, I mean, it's just a taboo subject. It's the last thing you want to, to talk about in New Zealand culture. And that's quite different here. You know, what you believe is the, is the most interesting thing about a person here. And that's why, and that's why it's discussed. Parents uh, found out that a woman who was travelling New Zealand, giving talks in towns and villages and cities throughout New Zealand, was going to be visiting their area and was going to be giving a talk about the Baha'i faith. So they decided to go and they went and listened to what she had to say and were very attracted by the Baha'i principles of unity and concept of peace and the oneness of mankind. And so they asked questions and they investigated, they read books, and in 1948 they both became Baha'is. Now my father was the first Baha'i of Māori ancestry. Kiribati was occupied during World War II by the Japanese. The U.S. Marines invaded in 1943 for the Battle of Tarawa and defeated the Japanese in one of the bloodiest battles of the war. In addition to large losses on both sides, thousands of local people died and suffered greatly. Remnants of the war still haunt the island. This is where the Japanese ran to after the battle on Tarawa. This is where they, they came to and they finally flushed out and, and the last of them were killed by the Americans. And their bodies, the people here said, I said how many, and they said many, many Japanese. Their bodies and all their, their uniforms and their guns and everything, all buried here. So this um, preoccupation with the paramount importance of, of promoting peace pervaded my childhood. You know. The discussion around the dinner table was always the world situation and what was happening in the world and what was likely to happen and how important it was for certain things to be done and, and so on. So I, I grew up with these ideas, you know. And there's still a, a preoccupation with my work. This is the, this is the, the day that has been planned for the youth conference. So we, so we give our thanks to all of you who have come to, to uh, attend this conference. Baha'u'llah's message of peace and spiritual well-being are sorely needed in a struggling world. Robin and Mike's love for God and love for humanity assist them in their efforts to bring about a united world through serving their beloved Baha'i community in the midmost heart of the ocean. <laughs> This family sends a message of love and encouragement to the thousands of Baha'i pioneers throughout the world. It is the efforts of pioneers, both past and present, that has made the Baha'i faith the second most widespread religion on the planet, promoting the cherished ideals of the oneness of God, the oneness of religion, and the oneness of people.